Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be discussing mental illness and social media. My name is Tracy Maxfield. I'm a nurse, author and staunch anti-bullying and mental health advocate, consultant and educator. And this is number six of my video slash blog post series discussing bullying, mental illness and suicide in children and teenagers. So before we go on, I just want to remind everyone that um, I'd be delighted if you would consider subscribing to this channel. The videos come out every single Monday without fail and the blog post can be found on my website www.tracymaxfield.com. Also when you subscribe you'll see a little icon like right there of a bell and if you press that then it will notify you every single week that a new video has been posted. Anyway now that I finished trying to sell myself um, let's move on. So I think all we've been talking about for the past couple of years is social media and the harmful and negative effects it's having not just on children and teenagers but on the population in general. Um, it's become a haven for um, human trafficking, exploitation, um, trolling sites, paedophiles, um, cyberbullying, you name it. Um, really, people seem to find safety hiding behind a keyboard and a phone or a tablet or a laptop and just spewing poison and so much anger and hatred they have towards people, mainly those that they don't even know. And the thing is, is that those words are still damaging. We are human beings and by nature, we want everyone to like and love us. And when we have people just spewing complete horrible, vile stuff, it hurts. It gets us right there. Anyway, um, if we feel like this as adults, how on earth do you think our kids feel when they see that, when they hear that, when they experience it directed not only at themselves, but also maybe at a family member, a parent, a friend or a teacher? Um, it's very difficult for them to try and make sense of everything that's going on in the world as it is. And now understanding um, these complete strangers, these false identities um, on social media. So I guess the question is, does social media cause mental disorders or not? Um, well, if you think back to the YouTube videos and blog posts that I've already done, we know that a mental disorder is caused by changes that happen in one of the six areas of the brain. So it could be the one dealing with behaviors or the one dealing with the physical aspects of the body, um, the emotions, the signal, signaling, that's the fight, flight, fight response. We know that um, there's a disorder going on there and usually that's either by a genetic influence or it could be something that happened in utero or the current environment. And when we talk about the current environment, I want you to think back to ACEs, Adverse Childhood Experiences. So you know, a child, teenager that maybe had a parent that was incarcerated, involved in crime or drugs, um, is at an increased likelihood of um, developing a mental disorder or mental illness later in life because of the traumatic changes that it causes to the brain. It actually stunts brain growth and development and results in uh, a huge inflammatory process that goes on in the neurons, which is kind of shifted back and forth in the body because of the immune system and how closely connected everything is. So I think we can look at it two ways. For a child that is, or a teenager, that is already predisposed to having a mental disorder, such as anxiety, eating disorder, OCD, depression, being exposed to social media and some of the things that's happening is likely going to exacerbate the mental illness. And if uh, the signs and symptoms weren't showing by then, these are actually gonna heighten them and they will come out with a vengeance. For those who really um, don't seem to have been affected by many adverse childhood experiences and 
um, are in a really good home and have a good group of friends, the social media component, what that can do to them is what it does to their internal well-being, to their psyche, for want of a better word. So we are a nation of comparers. We live by comparison and we live by materialistic ventures. And so we always want to have the biggest, the best, the newest. You see everyone lining up for iPhones, you know, when they're being released. Um, also, perception of what is beautiful to be accepted in society. You now have to look a certain way and act a certain way and have certain items. And what the images that we see on social media, the creations of what is the ideal woman or the perfect man, um, we know are not true. A, lots of plastic surgery, lots of Photoshop. Um, and then if they really are as they appear, then remember, makeup artists, um, dietitians, exercise coaches, plastic surgery, I mean, there's so much to have created this image of what is perfection. And we know that it really isn't. And that anyone down the road can't just go and attain that. But we've brought our kids up um, and their friends that this is what's normal and this is what's accepted. And so it can erode the self-confidence and the self-worth, not only of boys, but more especially of girls. Um, as they're going through puberty and with the hormonal changes, they may find that their skin breaks out. They may put on a little bit of weight. We used to call it puppy fat. Um, but still, all that makes them believe that they are not fulfilling the image of what is that perfect woman, that perfect girl. And what that does to their psyche is it just drags them down because they're com that they have that comparison that they're not good enough, that they're not worthy and that no one loves them. And so that's one of the real harmful effects of social media. The same can be said with um, a guy, a boy, um, you know, if it's your, your worth is um, having perfectly sculptured pecs or you have to look a certain way or you have to have like a, a goatee or a soul patch, um, all of those um, go into the head of the, of the children, of the teenagers, and they want to belong. They want that sense of connection. They also want to be liked by their peers. They're trying, they're striving to find their independence and who they are. And so social media is actually become their parent, their new role model, and that's not right because it's sending them down a very dark and scary patch. Up until a few months ago, and I just dis I discussed this on a video, um, cutting and self-harm, non-suicidal self-injury, was seen as cool and a rite of passage and the thing to do on social media until we had so many kids going into Emerge, some with life-threatening injuries, others with serious wounds and infections. And it was only the medical um, personnel raised such an uproar that the likes of Instagram and uh, Pinterest and Facebook started taking down those images. So social media um, can, can promote eating disorders. It can promote um, self-injury, that you're just not worthy, you're not good enough. It also makes you lack self-confidence and self-worth. And unless you've got really supportive friends and family and parents that are really buffering you up and pushing you and saying you're beautiful as you are, and we all know as teenagers we may have heard that, but we didn't really believe it. Um, that it's, uh, it's impossible that your child and or your teenager is not going to be affected by, by this. Um, every child and teenager has a computer at home. They have a tablet, they have a cell phone, so they have access to it constantly. And the other thing that's wrong, that um, is the problem with social media is that we now have a verified addiction to social media and to video games. And what they're finding is that kids that use video games, not only does their brain get addicted so they want more, but their brain actually starts responding to the video games they see. So if they have one where there's car chases and gunfights or war, um, the signaling responses in the brain, the fight, flight, fright, actually are triggered and they're going to overdrive and it actually starts desensitizing the kids to any stresses in their environment. Uh, also, they, they become immune almost to um, 
to physical outbursts and threats and a profanity because they see it so much on the video that it also becomes part of their life. And unless someone is there to say, you know what, that is not appropriate, that is not correct to say those words. Um, also, you know, when you stab someone um, and they get up in the video game in real life, that actually causes pain and injury. There's legal consequences. Morally, it's wrong. Unless someone's there to point that out to them, this is why we have kids, like the kids in Britain, who nailed a, a plank of wood into a six-year-old little boy's head with autism spectrum disorder because they wanted to know what it felt like because they'd seen it on TV. So again, you can see the huge disconnect where what they're seeing as fantasy has become their reality, but they're not able to interpret it. Um, another thing that we're finding as well is that um, kids keep their phones on all the time. Um, so we know that insomnia and sleep problems are a huge contributory factor to the development of um, mental disorders, specifically bipolar, anxiety, depression, and it's also seen in the early days of schizophrenia. Um, and so exposure to that blue light constantly, what it does is it depresses the sleep in response. It stops the production of melatonin and we need melatonin um, to help us go to sleep. So if you think back in the days before social media, you know, um, bedtime would be at nine o'clock, lights would go out, your brain would automatically start producing melatonin and you would go through the stages of sleep. REM being the most important because that is the most restful and that's when everything kind of recharges. What the blue light is doing, it is not stimulating the production of melatonin. And so the, the brain is thinking it's constantly awake. And even if they do sleep, it's only for very short periods. And we're finding that the kids are not going into REM sleep. And the REM sleep is the problem because if you do not have REM sleep over a prolonged period of time, you start getting moody and irritable. Um, you may start eating um, lots of um, junk, salty, sugary, cravey kinds of foods. Um, you drink sugary drinks. Um, you don't want to exercise. You feel very dull and lethargic. You don't want to socialize. So then you see the kids um, not doing well at school, um, missing classes, not getting their homework done, because the reality is they need to just unwind from their social media devices and have a nap, have a good restful sleep. So I think it's a really good idea that now lots of parents are implementing a time in the evening and usually they suggest two hours before bedtime where every single device is shut down and goes into sleep mode until the morning. And what that does is those two hours then as everyone starts preparing for bed, the melatonin kicks in. And so by the time you go to bed, you're going into that point where you're going to have sleep. And then as you go through the stages of sleep, by the time you get into REM, which is about the third, fourth stage, that's when everything can kind of heal and recharge and rejuvenate. And then you get up and you feel better and you're better able to face the day. So I can't stress enough that um, poor sleep, no sleep, um, not well rested sleep is a definitely contributory factor to developing a mental illness. Um, I'm going to be running out of time soon, so I'm going to end up winding up this video, but I encourage you to go and see the blog post, which will also be posted on my website, www.tracymaxfield.com, and that will go into much more detail about social media and also some interesting statistics um, about the impact on mental illness in kids. So I hope this has been a good learning experience for you. My name is Tracy Maxfield. Join me again in my next YouTube video and it's actually tied in very nicely with mental illness and social media. It is about mental illness and bullying. Thank you for your time and before I forget, don't forget to subscribe. Have a good week.